Good evening, everyone. Welcome to piano tutorial number 17 on the Siva King dead weight method piano technique. Tonight, I thought I would take a piece of music and show you how you can apply the Siva King rules to learning a new piece of music or any piece of music you're trying to uh, bring back. Uh, it's slow, heavy practice with a high lift, but there's you have to understand the physics of what you're doing with each note and then apply it to uh, tempo that you choose for the piece slow uh, but to the metronome because when you can keep it steady to the metronome because of the physical approach to the keys then it's going to be productive for you so um, I'll give you an example I'm going to use the show the Bach prelude number 21 in B flat major it's 32 30 seconds in every bar so uh, this slow practice means you have to have the right technique for each 30 seconds so uh, there's no fooling around with it you have to let the dead weight drop and into the keys but you want to think of releasing from high and sinking down into the keys like coming through a cloud till the finger tip is able to feel that it can catch the weight balance of the arm, this back of your upper arm, the relaxed arm, the body weight, on the tip of the finger, left or right, till you feel the balance. So that's the strength of the finger for each of those 30 second notes. And then lift your unused fingers high. So it's slow practice. The wrist is movable like your lungs are movable. It's always free, but you want to lift those unused fingers all in the hand so that you're not pulling from behind the wrist and stiffening your hand. It's got to be in the hand and lifting. And a warm up exercise would be to clench your feet, your fingers together tight like that for maybe three seconds and then relax. One, two, three, relax. And then take each finger and just gently stretch it back to the count of three or five. And uh, it just opens up your hands and prevents injuries and allows the blood to flow easily in them. But it allows you to have an easier finger lift and use that, be able to use that lift of the finger to move you to the next note. So I'll, I'll give you an example like this piece is in B flat major so each of those like this and this and this and this is an eighth note so that would be one tick so that would be So when you do that, and it's up to that tempo, that means But if you want to get it slow and heavy, it's much slower than that. It's where you hear that, that sudden release, that balance of the weight in the keys, that taking of the weight. You see, I'm going to the, I'm lifting so high that I can use that lift to get me to the next note in the keys. And that rotation of the forearm turns the hand like a doorknob. solid the tone sounds. It's not forced. You're trying to make a, C, a sine curve, a wave. The, the hammer lops up into the, because you're loose when you drop, it lops the hammer up into the wire and it sends out a wave. It sends a wave of the wire which is transmitted through the bridge to the sounding board which goes up and down and makes the air go like that to your ear. And this is what you're thinking of for each of those 32 seconds. Uh, sec 30 second notes, it, it happens so fast when it goes fast that you don't even think of it, but you, you've done the slow practice so much that you can use the lift to move you to the next note, to play the piece really. And then if you want
one later, you're in the keys and you're balanced and you're, you're leading the weight over to the next note through the lift of the unused fingers and the, and the one that's playing li shifts your weight to the next note. So, that's slow practice. A quick, sharp finger action, never in between. Keep a V out from you like that. Don't let the knuckles sink down in, like sinking like that. Keep them raised that you can put a pencil through there and balance. It's all physics. the music up and just go through it for you with the metronome and let you see that it is possible even if I pick up the tempo a little bit and go to, to this what is set at here it's going to be faster than than before and let that get the brightness right so uh, it'll be faster than I was just showing you but that's assuming that I've done slow, heavy practice throughout the piece, which means even in parts like this. So. And you see how I'm combining the rotation with the getting over to the next note by lifting the finger that's, that's playing because that's where I'm balanced, is on that finger that's playing. So. strength of the fingers are taking the weight, not a stiff wrist. So now I'll put the metronome on and go through it where one tick is an eighth, which is four thirty seconds. So it's quicker, but it's using that finger lift to propel the piece. So here we go. You might want that a little louder so that you'll hear it. But it's still heavy practice. So here we go. to play it you need to be able to put um, dynamics 
you need to have a direction. The, the music will be very boring if it has no direction. And there will be even in Bach a little bit of rubato where you can pull and linger and then move ahead. But it still needs this underlying current of pulse, control, color, and beat. And the color means it has to have a dire dynamic direction as well. So it can't just be each note having a nice tone because you sank into it nicely. The line has to have a direction. So if I go, uh, let's see now. Now, maybe I go echo like the second time, and then still make it do, do something, make it go somewhere. So anyway, let's try this a little bit more with freedom and color, but the left has to be pianissimo, so. I just wanted to give you an idea of how you can use Siva King rules in practicing a piece so that it's not just a uh, technique you're using all those ideas in, it's learning a piece. It's getting the memory in the muscles of your hands for your new piece or for what, uh, bringing back a piece that you've had in the past. Like for example, I learned the, uh, the notes of the Bach Chacon and I I always love to go back to that first page when I play. Now that's just heavy and high lift and going to the next note by the lift, by using the lift of the fingers that are playing. But if I want to go to play the piece, to have balance and voice the, the melody, just shows you like that piece is still in my memory and in my hands and my m the muscles of my hands for so many years because I learned it through slow heavy high lift practice every time I'd come to a lesson we, with Miss Barnes we'd start with that slow practice of that piece just that she knew and she'd be pulling on my elbow make sure it falls back that the arm is relaxed that I've got my dead weight in the keys and that that's then I can voice it and bring out what I want to hear so these ideas I hope you can apply to pieces you're learning and that you can still apply them to your Siva King exercises that you do each day as well. That builds the strength of the muscles, but you need to be able to apply it to pieces because there's nobody wants to listen to technique. <laughs> so, and it is a good purpose for it now. You can, you can see that. You can see how I can use what I build in the technique so that I can do all these voicings and, and uh, balancing of the, of the hands and creating music and shaping phrases, all that kind of beautiful musical stuff, trying to make each phrase as beautiful as possible. It's all because I build up the technique that I have the strength in my hands 
that I can go ahead and do that kind of playing after I've got the slow heavy out of the way. Well, I still will do the slow heavy each day on the piece I'm trying to bring back. But when I go to play it, it has to be the music. And it's fun to work at pieces like that because you have the, the, the physical strength to do it then. I hope you learn from that and enjoy it and that you can apply it to your pieces. Take care and have a good evening. Bye-bye.